row upon row of sophisticated assault rifles, boxes of pistols, ammunition, vision equipment. Videos posted by the Taliban online in recent days boast of what they say are their seizures of the assault rifles in the Afghan city of Herat. And at Kunduz airport, armored Humvees by the dozen. Some mine-resistant ambush-protected vehicles called MRAPs costing half a million dollars apiece. Even a small drone. These are the potentially lethal spoils the Taliban are believed to have captured in recent days from defeated Afghan forces, weapons made in America, supplied by the U.S. to their fallen Afghan allies. So now we're arming the Taliban and marooning our own citizens in Afghanistan. Who could possibly have seen that coming? Glenn Greenwald is one of the few journalists who did see it coming. He writes for Substack where all of us read him, you should too. He joins us tonight. Glenn, thanks so much for coming on. So it's a little weird for the news organizations that repeated uncritically, and not just on the left, I, I hate to say it, but almost all of them just repeated these, this kind of happy talk about how Afghanistan was progressing for 20 years, and then they whip around and are shocked that actually it's a mess and always have been. There's some dishonesty there, isn't there? The whole thing was a fraud. And, you know, you can go back to things like in 2019, the Washington Post publishing what it called the Afghanistan Papers. There's now a book out by the reporter who broke that really important story. They did a good job on it, where they obtained secret documents going up through 2016 under the Obama years, where internally they were saying the exact opposite of what they were saying publicly about the war in Afghanistan, just like they did in Vietnam, as revealed by the Pentagon Papers. They were saying to the public, as you just showed, we're making great progress, we have faith in the Afghan National Security Forces. Internally, they knew the Afghan National Security Forces were a joke. They were filled with illiterate people who couldn't do anything, with drug addicts, with people who had no interest in fighting. They would disappear as soon as they got their paycheck. The whole war, for years and years and years, was a lie. And so... While I do agree, of course, that there are ineptitudes in how we withdrew, the yes. fact that we withdrew, because two presidents, first President Trump and then President Biden, ensured that it happened, is something to celebrate in large part because it's the first time in as long as I can remember as these people, what I do know is the deep state, that manipulate us all the time, that lie to us all the time for their own benefit, have finally lost. And the media is turning against Biden, not because they suddenly became fair, but because they've been in bed with the deep state. That's who fed them Russiagate. That's who fed them all the leaks during the Trump years. And they're angry on behalf of the faction that they genuinely serve. Well, I, I, I hate to say I agree with you. I mean, I, I think Biden is an awful president, the worst I can remember, and totally out of it, senile. On the other hand, he's the president of the United States. You're not supposed to leak an audio tape of his recorded conversation with another head of state. I mean, that's, that's a felony, for one thing. And for another, like, how can any president do real diplomacy if he's being undermined by permanent Washington? Like, why shouldn't we be worried about that? You know, I, I think this is the key point for me, at least, when I look at the Trump years. A lot of people obviously ask me, why weren't you as worried as other people on, you know, the left about the Trump presidency? Right. And my reason was, was because what I saw in opposition to the Trump presidency was something far more dangerous right. than anything that I thought he would be capable of doing, which is that they took their masks off. They made clear the CIA, the Pentagon, the permanent military and security state inside the United States that they were willing to intervene in U.S. politics to undermine the elected president. The very first article I wrote before Trump was even inaugurated in January 17, 2017, was headlined, The Deep State Goes to War with the Elected President. The fact that we have a deep state, that the U U.S. media was cheering, they were thrilled that these generals, they were heralding as heroes for ignoring Trump's orders, for keeping classified information away from him, for manipulating him, for subverting his decisions. They were cheering these generals as saving us from our elected leader, which is the definition of a deep state, at the same time as they were calling anyone who was pointing out that we have a deep state unhinged, crazy conspiracy theorists. That, to me, is the most dangerous development of the last five years, is that unelected generals, intelligence operatives, arrogated unto themselves while the media cheered the power to override our democracy whenever they thought that it was in our best interest to do so. And that leaves the entire population powerless. You know, your vote doesn't matter. And that, that makes the society super volatile and dangerous. And I agree with you 100%. I used to laugh at the term the deep state, but it's totally real, unfortunately. Glenn Greenwald, I appreciate your coming on today. Thank you.
Good to be with you, Tucker. Thanks. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.